Islamic radicals continue to murder Christians in their path to a caliphate. With me, the Vicar General of the Antioch Orthodox Archdiocese of North America, Father Thomas Zane. Father, thank you for being with us today. You're welcome. Good to be here. Thank you. Can you ever envision peace in the Middle East for Christians? I think we can. I think we can because prior to the, for example, in Syria and in Iraq, prior to these wars, the Christians in those countries lived in peace with uh, their Muslim neighbors. And that's a very important point, Father. And, uh, you know, I would like to understand why this genocide, and I think you agree it's a genocide, yes? yes? Why now? We've tried to overthrow governments, we meaning the West, or the U.S., whoever, without thinking ahead to what the countries will look like after we remove the governments. We don't like this government or that government and we remove them for whatever reason, but we don't follow through with what's going to happen afterwards. So you have a situation, for example, in Iraq, despite our billions of dollars and tens of thousands of American troops and God knows how many Iraqi lives lost, and we still have no solid government in place. In fact, it's worse now than it has been. Uh, and in Syria, the same thing. We tried so hard to remove the president and the government there without thinking what's going to replace it. We're trying to impose democracy without realizing it has to come from within. You know, Father, I hear all the time about the vacuum that's left after our military leaves these countries, and you, you think of it in terms of the government, but I never really thought about that vacuum as impacting Christians so much who you say have lived for generations with Muslims peacefully. Yes, I mean, you know, despite whatever problems these secular leaders have had, they've been secular, and as such, religious groups have lived peacefully among each other whether because the governments even if only because the government has imposed that peace they've lived freely they have built churches they've uh, worshipped freely they've uh, there's no in Syria you never asked anybody what your religion is you were Syrian for example because it was a secular state mm -hmm. now is, is it the best form of government in the world probably not but with regard to religious minorities not just Christians but all religious minorities they were considered equal citizens so then the the secular governments that may not have been the best in terms of the way we in the United States look at it uh, did allow for a certain amount of pluralcy yes. but now what we've got are the extremists who are so far to the right of where maybe Assad and uh, um, you know uh, Mubarak and and others that they are now killing the Christians yes. what should the world be doing to make this right? We, well, we have to bring peace to Syria and peace to How? Iraq. How? It's, it's difficult now because the cat's out of the bag, so to speak. You know, we've, we've allowed where there never existed these fundamentalist groups in Iraq or in Syria, we've allowed them now to come in and it's hard to uproot them just by dropping a few bombs or, or, or not only have we allowed it, but we've, our friends have funded it. Saudi Arabia, Qatar, Turkey has allowed them to go in and out of their borders freely and cause this mess where we have nuns have been kidnapped in one of our monasteries. We have one of our archbishops kidnapped, two archbishops, one of ours and one from the Syriac Orthodox Church. Until now, we've heard nothing about them. The one is the brother of our new patriarch. We've had priests have their eyes gouged out by these people. Oh. And uh, all this was is foreign to Syria. It's foreign to the So the they people. were living peacefully before yes. our I mean, intervention. This, this element is from the outside that has come in. Very quickly. This. In 2001, the world panicked when Buddhas were destroyed by the Taliban. Uh, but the antiquities today, no one talks about the destruction of them. Yeah, I don't know why. I mean, it seems like when it's uh, Christianity, nobody seems to care so much. And in fact, this program is actually airing on the Feast of St. Stephen, the first martyr of the church from, you know, the, from, the, from the beginning of Christianity. So it's kind of uh, appropriate when we talk about martyrdom and, and, and churches being destroyed and other, even mosques being destroyed. You know, it's not, we, it's not simply Christian versus Muslim here. It's, it's, it's extreme extremism mm -hmm. that is affecting all the minorities. But the vast majority of victims are Christians. 
Yes. Actually, no. I've asked the majority of other Muslims, to be honest. To the moderate in Syria, Muslims. Speaking in, 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 about Syria, the moderate but Muslims. But in Iraq? In Iraq, yes. It's, it's a different situ situation. Because they're fighting also among the Shia and the Sunni back and forth. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the Christians are somehow a byproduct of this All extremism. Right. All right. Father Zane, so. thanks so much for being with us.